The Porsche Cayman is the only car in the GT4 class. It has no competition, no rival, and no benchmark to compare against. Until now. With the introduction of the BMW M4, the GT4 class has exploded into life. Two different cars with two very different concepts. Front-engined versus rear-engined. Straight-line speed versus cornering agility. A comparison between these two to see which car comes out on top was going to require several tests and variables. This wasn't going to be a straightforward choice. For the first test, we did the classic when it comes to race cars. Put them on a racetrack and give both cars an equal number of laps to go as fast as they can. My track of choice for the GT4 cars was the Snedderton 300 layout. Snedderton is a fantastic national level circuit which I think suits these cars. Both were given 10 flying laps to set the faster sector times they could, which were broken down into two runs of five laps. The setups used for both cars had matching concepts as well. If one car had max downforce, so would the other. In between the two five lap runs, I allowed minor setup changes for both cars just in case there was something fundamentally holding the car back, such as traction control or a brake bias setting. However, I did not allow significant changes such as tyre pressures or spring rates. Beyond just looking at the sector times themselves though, I'd also be going into telemetry to understand why exactly these cars did the lap times that they did. The good news is, according to my runs, that these two cars have an excellent balance of performance, at least around Snedderton. The Porsche would beat out the BMW for the fastest optimal lap time by just 5 hundredths of a second, so a big well done to iRacing for that. The Porsche would claim both the second and third sectors of the lap, which follow a more technical nature than the first sector. Sector 2 was the most interesting to note though with the Porsche putting 9 hundredths of a second over the BMW in a sector that consists of a lot of slow speed hairpins that float into one another. However, if it weren't for the long Bentley straight to end sector 2, the Porsche would have finished almost 2 tenths faster than the BMW. By analysing the virtual racing school telemetry for these two laps, it becomes a consistent pattern that the BMW gains lap time on the Porsches down every straight. Exiting onto the Bentley straight, the Porsche's initial exit speed was 1.9 km an hour faster than that of the BMW, yet when we analyse the speed at the end of the straight, the BMW is now 2 km an hour faster. Interestingly, most of this time gain happens during the Porsche's upshifts, with the BMW peaking at about 2.7 km an hour quicker than the rear engine car. This speed advantage for the BMW in a straight line is likely why it won out in the first sector by 6 hundredths of a second over the Porsche despite the tight hairpin. When it comes to a circuit like Monza or Spa, the straight line speed advantage of the BMW will likely become a much more significant factor. Or at least it would be if you knew how to use the brakes. So it was time to see just how much faster the car genuinely is when pressing down on the loud pedal and not crashing into a wall like a Muppet. From here there would be two tests, an acceleration test at Sonoma's drag strip to test how these cars perform coming out of a corner, and then we'll also run a test around Talladega Speedway to get an idea of what the cars are capable of running absolutely flat out. At Sonoma I ran two different types of acceleration tests. The first one is a standing start, and the second one being a rolling start on the pit limiter and releasing it at the start line. In the Porsche Esports Super Cup Sprint Challenge series, the cars use a standing start, but in the Michelin Pilot GT series, the vehicles use a rolling start, so I wanted to cover the bases for both. But the results were the same for both tests. The BMW, when it comes to acceleration, is quickly proving the go-to car, beating out the Porsche in the rolling start test by almost two tenths of a second and repeating the effort moments later in the standing start test. Taking the two cars to Talladega Speedway did little to disprove the BMW's power, with the car completing the lap with an average speed 1.4 kilometers an hour faster than the Porsche and a peak speed also 1.5 kilometers an hour faster. And the good news for the BMW doesn't stop there either. During both the Snedderton and Talladega tests, I was noting down the fuel consumption for both cars. 
Both times, the BMW used more fuel per lap than the Porsche, but it does also feature a fuel tank that is 12 litres larger. If we break down the fuel burn over these laps as a percentage of the total fuel capacity, the BMW comes out on top once again, albeit very narrowly. In conclusion, the fact is these two cars are well matched when it comes to outright lap time, with the Porsche only beating out the BMW by less than a tenth of a second around Snedderton. But the BMW has quite a lot going for it. While it may not match the Porsche in the technical sections of the circuit, its superior acceleration, especially on the upshifts compared to the Porsche, will allow for a car that can make overtakes happen with a lot less effort. To further add to this, fuel consumption is marginally better as well. Tire wear is a factor I did not get into as I feel it is too subjective between setups and driving style that every driver in iRacing could come up with a different answer to the question. However, if you were sitting on the buy cars screen on iRacing pondering between the two GT4 cars, my money right now would go to the BMW. I'm Bo Albert, thanks for watching guys.